Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, and I hope you had a fabulous Christmas. We're very close to having uh, 2021 be in the rearview mirror, and hopefully next year we won't have any surprises. It'll be a normal year, and we can look on it favorably. So today we're going to we're going to take a look at what's going on with inventory and why it is a problem. And while I do that, please push the like button. I like it when you do that. So does YouTube. Um, so inventory. Inventory gets blamed. Um, I see all kinds of things. Greed. You baby boomers don't care. Um, all kinds of different comments on why inventory is where it is. And here's where we're at today. We have less than 6,000, but it's to be expected. You can see here that uh, we're right where we were last year. We're down and uh, we're starting to turn. See that little turn down here starting to come up? That's uh, going to be inventory doing what it did last year, coming back up. And uh, where it goes from there, we don't know. Uh, we're hoping, I'm hoping that we're going to see, um, I can get rid of this alien ship here, that we're going to see more um, listings come on in January and we will but we don't know how many. Check my microphone. So we really don't know how big uh, the inventory boost is gonna be of the first of the year. Personally, I think it's probably, we're not gonna see a boost maybe until about March. We're gonna see an uptick in inventory going into January because that seasonally we always do, uh, but we may not see a boost until March because we're gonna wait and see. That's when the Fed says they're gonna start raising rates. I don't know, so far the market doesn't believe them. But when we look at inventory, let's look at where some of the real drivers are and why there's a housing shortage and, uh, and what can be done about it. So right here you can see this is from the National Association of Realtors. This is U.S. population by age in millions. And here's the main drivers right here. Uh, 33 is, is the average age of first-time home buyers right now. And you can see that uh, there are more of them than there are of baby boomers. And the baby boomers in numbers are obviously declining as we get older, and then you have the silent generation. I don't know where they get these names, Gen X, Millennials, Gen Z, Gen Alpha. That just sounds weird to me. But there are a lot of people in this age group that are now ready to purchase homes. Why are there so many people there? Well, because the baby boomers had a lot of kids. So these are the ones that are driving the market right now. Let me break it down here for you and show you what's going on. First time home buyers, it's up by 34%. So there's a good activity there. It stays kind of steady. It did hit a peak of 50% uh, back in the 2000, I want to say four, five. Median age of home buyers is 56 for people that are repeat buyers. In other words, they'd already purchased a home, sold it, bought another one. And home buyers, first time home buyers, average age as we saw in the other chart was 33. Multi-generational, this is mainly driven by baby boomers that are buying homes where they can house their aging parents either with a casita or a guest house. It's kind of down to what was considered a normal level. So nothing jumping out at us there. And But I want to look at something because we go back to this people, you know, age 33 here buying homes and show you one of the problems that, that comes up and why there's a shortage. Here's the Federal Reserve data on housing starts. Okay, so here's the crash. See that big gray line there? And I'm not going to wave the mouse over because it, it kind of goes away. That big gray line was a major recession after the housing crash in 2008. And then you can see that line graph going. Nothing was being built for 10 years. And uh, um, oh, Terry's complaining that uh, he didn't receive a Tesla for Christmas. I didn't either. Um, but you can see that 10 years, people just weren't building. Now, why weren't they building? Well, according to the Federal Reserve here, and I agree with them, it says down here that um, they were initially, the reason was thought that households were either finding it more difficult to ac access mortgages or getting cold feet when considering the potential pitfalls of home ownership, such as the large number of foreclosures during the recession. That's really what was going on because after 2008, people were just going, you just can't buy a home because you know the value is going to go down. 
and they were completely ignoring the mortgage crisis that uh, everybody had a mortgage that reset. But that being said, we had a 10 year drought where builders were afraid to build. And you can see right here just how low that number got. And here come the millennials, that largest buying block that we've had in decades, and we haven't built them anything. Now, the good news is for Arizona, in November, we have 38,000, 31,000 uh, new permits for single family housing uh, versus last year we had 28,000. So that's good. But in 2004, we had a high of 54,000. That's kind of the number we need to see to give us some relief in inventory. And uh, so we're trying to get there, but the problem is they're having a hard time building them, getting them done in time. The majority of homes in Phoenix right now that are being sold in new houses are ones that haven't even been built yet. So the builders are selling you a home that's probably just a cement pad at this time. And it's going to take them 18 months to get it done. Right now in this market, there's no such thing as a spec home. You know, where you go in, the home's done. You might get to pick some of the countertops or maybe the appliances, but for the most part, it's done. Those don't exist anymore. They're being gobbled up so fast. So I would say 90% of the homes that are being sold in the new home market right now is you just signing a contract and waiting for it to be built. So... That's where we're at today. Now, we look ahead, not ahead, but looking back at some of the different uh, uh, numbers here. Here's another problem. Eh, it's probably not a problem, but um, baby bust. Children under 18 in the home. Millenn millennials are not having kids. They're not having very many. Versus baby boomers, 58% of us had children back in the 80s, whereas today, only 31%. Now, why is this interesting? Well, when you're ready to sell, when you're my age, there aren't going to be any buyers. <laughs> so you're not going to see that big generational wave. And that's really what's causing it right now. You can see here, we had 58% of us were having children back here in the 80s. Now it's 2021, almost 2022, and we're aging in place, and there's not enough building going on. And the reason that we're aging in place is a lot of us got, you know, low mortgage rates, refinanced, uh, the home's almost paid off. Yeah, could probably use a smaller home, but it's kind of convenient to stay put because you're bringing the grandkids over. It's kind of nice to have the room. So everybody's just staying put until we end up in the silent generation, end up in a nursing home. They're going to call that the silver tsunami. Um, but that's really the main driver in this low inventory crisis that we have and it's simply because a lot of kids here not very many kids here first time home buyer composition says here that married couples make up 50 percent of the first time home buyers interestingly and statistically look at this single females right now are 21 or 20 percent of the first time home buyers and they've actually led the charge versus single men single males down here around 11 percent why is that well they're all buying boats and cars <laughs> so way to go ladies uh, now what they're doing in this survey here is saying buyers use of agents is running about 87 percent you get down here to seven percent and that's uh buyers going directly to the home builder or buyers um going to for sale by owner and sellers that want a full service agent people that want to list their home is still pretty high at 90 percent versus looking down here again for sale by owner or other and other i have no idea what that would be so that is basically what's going on in the real estate market out there uh let's see somebody's got i don't even know what that is it looks like it's from russia in that comment so <laughs> so the Inventory shortage is going to be with us for a while. It's going to be with us all year in 2022. I think we may start to be surprised and start to see uh, we're going to get our January seasonal trend. We might start seeing some inventory coming on in March. I don't know. We're hoping for it. And the reason March is important is that's our peak real estate season here in Arizona. Uh, we have all of our winter visitors are here. Hopefully, hopefully, this baseball strike will be over and we will have spring training. I'm going to be really ticked off if we don't because a lot of the restaurants are really still trying to recover from that being closed last year. We don't need this strike messing us up. Just extend your contract another year and 
give us a chance to recover, will you? That's my little baseball spiel. So I will see you tomorrow. We'll go over some numbers. Take care. We'll be right back.